what is going on everyone it's taylor nicole tuning in with another video with you guys once again now today is the start of something new um you know i've been on youtube for a while i've been really trying to figure out you know um how i want to leverage this platform what i really want to do on here um you know in my past i had launched a couple of podcasts um and some of you who've been around for a while, you've probably have been following me for years and maybe you were around when I launched my first podcast and my second podcast and did a testing on a third one. Um, but, you know, at the time, none of them really seemed to really align with what I really wanted to do. Um, and so now this is going to be like my third official, you know, podcast. Um, and this will be the will be episode one of it um and so i'm excited about it i'm excited to be able to like use my platform to help women to navigate life to help them to heal to help them to just become the women that god intended them to be and one of the first topics i wanted to touch on was really a topic that i myself have struggled with over the years and that i think a lot of women are struggling with especially with a lot of the content that is being pushed um, amongst women right now. And that is, you know, being a career woman versus being like a wife and a mother, um, being a career woman versus being a traditional woman. Um, I think that a lot of women are struggling with trying to balance the two or feeling like they need to choose between the two. Like, should I focus more on my career or should I focus more on, you know, being a wife and having a family and, you know, th things like that. And so I wanted to, to really, um, to touch on that because I think that what we're, what we're lacking, um, is a, a, a balanced view on certain topics like this. I think that there are uh, a lot of extremes when it comes to this. And I, we're, we're actually, I'm going to actually get into that uh, in, in a little bit here, but I had ran across uh, a phenomenal woman by the name of Susan Banker. And I absolutely love her teachings for women, especially younger women. And I, I love her points of view. I love the research that she, she does. Uh, I just love the work that she does. Um, you know, I ran across her YouTube some time ago. And though I don't, you know, watch a whole lot of her content, just the content that I have seen uh, from her, just her speaking on certain topics uh, when it comes to women and relationships and things like that, the life of the life of women. Um, I just really love what she stands for. And I actually had ran across a clip of her um, speaking about kind of, you know, choosing between the two and what women women ultimately want what most women want uh when it comes to career and family and things like that and you know in this clip she does mention like motherhood and things like that and though i'm not specifically addressing motherhood because i know that not every woman can experience motherhood and not every woman wants to experience motherhood it's just the concept and the idea of what she's saying that I really want to kind of bring to the table and dive deeper into that topic. And I'm actually going to, um, I'm actually going to share that clip with you guys and then we will, um, we will discuss it. Shift in a woman's priorities becomes even more pronounced over time. When asked, and once again, I'm going to have these um, stats that I'm reading linked for you below. When asked, mothers of children under the age of 18 say their ideal situation is to work part-time. And among mothers who currently do work full-time, many would rather not. About 44% say working part-time would be ideal. In other words, what most mothers want regarding employment isn't in question. What is in question is the fact that we groom young women to become workhorses throughout their lives as though they are no different from men. We pressure women to construct lives in which work remains firmly at the center and that leaves no room for a graceful exit. Yet an off-ramp is what most women want. Unfortunately, their desires are up against an America that, whose values have changed dramatically. For the past several decades, we've chosen to exalt and to prioritize money and achievement over marriage and family. 
I think that Susan makes some great points. I think that Susan makes some great points. I think that what she is discussing is very relevant to the lives of many women, even myself included, and trying to fight against this hustle and bustle culture, trying to fight against, you know, um, the defeminization of women, especially black women. Like, there's so much pressure, you know, on women right now to be everything that they weren't meant to be. And, you know, that's what I really want to discuss in this podcast with you guys today. Now, you know, I've been kind of for this past year just really observing a lot of things. I haven't been super active on social media, but, you know, I have kind of been more of an observer observer than anything. And one of the things that I have noticed in the social media space when it comes to content creation, especially geared towards women or content creation geared towards relationship issues and all the other stuff. Um, There's two extremes that I'm seeing in the content creation space amongst women. And so there's one extreme where it's kind of like boss chick, boss chick, boss chick. You need to be all about your bag, go and get the bag screw these men, blah, 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 right? You, you, you've you seen it before, the boss chick mentality. Now, there's nothing wrong with being a woman who owns businesses and things like that, but I think that what I'm talking about is not a woman who owns businesses. I'm talking about a woman who carries kind of a certain a certain mentality, almost a, it's really a, a feminism type of mentality, right? And then you have, the other extreme right now this is more recent that i'm seeing this uh extreme of of kind of of raising of women who are very much traditional and when i say traditional i mean like they're on the extreme side of traditional uh they kind of have have put femininity in this box and like if you aren't doing like super or what's considered super feminine things um, then you're not, you're not exuding femininity as a woman. You're not exercising femininity as a woman. Um, and this is also dangerous because what happens is what, what, what a lot of them are doing is they're taking like the, the personality of, of women and shoving it in this box. And if you have anything within your personality that doesn't fit into that box, then you're less than feminine, right? Or you're less than a woman. Um, and so you have that extreme side of it where it's like, you just need to be sitting at home, popping out babies and cooking, cleaning. And then versus the other side, where it's like, you need to be like building, building, building. You need to have a bunch of businesses. You need to be super successful financially. Uh, and, and so you have those two extreme sides right now and one is not better than the other. Right. And, and so, you know, anytime we, we run into extremes, it, it means that there's, um, healing that has not happened. Um, there's trauma maybe that has not been addressed. And so when a woman is on one side of, or the other, there's, there's, um, issues within that has not, um, that has not been addressed. Right. And so, you know, um, but I, I I would say this, that there's for me, from what I'm seeing, um, I would say that there are arguably more women who are becoming more career focused and becoming more kind of business and money focused um, than the opposite, right? Now, this is not like bad that a woman wants to have a good career, good business. So, you know, I don't want to demonize, want anybody to think I'm demonizing that because I'm a woman who has a career. I'm a woman who, you know, um, uh, it's very entrepreneurial, um, minded. Right. And so like, I, there's nothing against that. Right. But, but, you know, there is this push, right. For women to, like I said, to become more and more masculine. There is this push to, um, to kind of get caught for more and more women to get caught up in this hustle and bustle culture. There's a push for it. And, you know, every time you turn around, even if you go on YouTube, right, there's 
Here's, a, here's 85 side hustles that you can do. Here's, here's how you can make six figures in a month. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like we want those things, obviously, right? We want to, not, not the side hustles, but we want to be, we want to be prosperous financially. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. But there's, there, there's, it's the way that it is, it is being pr- promoted. It is the way that, that w- women are being taught to go about this. Um, that is harmful to a lot of women, right? That is leading to a lot of women to exhaustion. That is leading a lot of women to depression. That is leading a lot of women to be stuck in survival mode. And that is not just, that is not what God has in mind for his daughters, right? And so um, I, I want to talk about this really quick when it comes to women having, you know, being career focused, right? Because I, I, I don't want anybody to think that they're being attacked or that there's no understanding in this. Because I think for one, I think one of the reasons why more women are, are career focused, be, besides the fact that it's just, you know, we're, we live in a society here in the United States where it's being pushed to, to go after the bag and to chase the money and to get all the achievements that Suzanne said. Um, but I also think that a lot of women don't have a choice, right? I think that some women are, are choosing that simply because that's the only choice they really have um, in the current situations that they are in. I don't believe all women are like, oh yeah, I just want to be in corporate America for the rest of my life. And I just want to climb the ladder. I don't think that's like the ideal situation for most women. I think that many women, they, for one, did not have fathers in their lives to, to kind of, you know, give them a co- a soft cushion to, to fall on. I also think that they just lack support. You know, um, you, you, if you didn't come from wealth, if you didn't come from um, money, if you don't have a strong support system uh, that allows for you to kind of flourish as a woman, well, you're kind of forced to make some hard decisions and to kind of get things done on your own. And before you know it, you can find yourself in a space where you're like, you've been just focused on your career, focused on your business, or focused on this and that for years. And you lift your head up and like, wow, like, you know, yeah, I, I'm successful in these areas, but, you know, this isn't necessarily how I wanted my life to be. And I don't think that women are intentionally doing that a lot of times. I think some women just, they naturally kind of fall in line with that just based off of, you know, their situations, whether that's, you know, um, from bad choices that they've made in relationships or just circumstances out of their control that's happening. I think that that plays a part in that too. Now, secondly, I believe many women have been hurt <laughs> in relationships. Now that now that we touch, we're touching on that uh, point. I think that um, you know, women getting into relationships with the wrong kind of men, um, and kind of having to start their whole lives over and having to start from scratch or having to rebuild is also a big reason why women, some women, choose to just focus on their career. I, you know, I've I've um spoken to many women who they're successful they have you know successful careers or successful businesses um but they don't really have a desire to date they don't have a desire to be married they don't have a desire to open themselves up in in that way to another man due to pain that they have experienced in the past Uh, i know some women who are very level-headed very level-headed women they're not crazy or anything like that they're just really hurt and they have not fully recovered from that. And so for them, it's just easier to just focus on, you know, doing their career and things like that than it is to um, to take that risk and, and allowing somebody else in. And so, you know, I can understand that side of it, too. Um, but, you know, I think that what we really really need as women is we need to realize that there's a happy medium. Um, I hate the fact that there's always this extreme uh, choice with women. Like you either are this or you either are that. You either are this or you're that or you're that or you're this, right? As if there's just no in between at all. And I believe there is a, a happy medium because I believe in the word of God. 
And when you read the book of Ecclesiastes, there are seasons for everything, right? There's a time to focus on this. There's a time to focus on that. There's a time to do this and there's a season to do that, right? And so, you know, when we are talking about having to choose between career or family or family or career as a woman, I think it's important to understand what season you are in right now and where you're ultimately trying to go and to make decisions and make adjustments accordingly. And, you know, I don't believe that every woman is supposed to be like a stay-at-home wife and stay-at-home mother. I don't believe that every woman belongs in the workplace, right? Um, I believe that there is, uh, uh, you know, we're all different. I believe that we're all, we all have different gifts and callings. Um, you know, not too long ago, I had actually read, not read, but I actually watched a movie, uh, Hidden Figures with um, Taraji P. Henson, which she did a phenomenal job playing um, Katherine Johnson. Now, Katherine Johnson was a black woman who uh, she was very gifted with, you know, math. And she actually, her gift and her genius actually helped us to, um, you know, go into space, right? And, you know, I think about women like that who are specifically, you know, there are women who are gifted with like numbers and math. There are women who are gifted in business. There are women who are gifted and, you know, those things, right? And so it's like, where else was she, <laughs> what else could she have done with her life when that's her gift, right? She, she obviously wasn't meant to be like a, just a stay at home wife or stay at home mom, you know, she had the gift of like mathematics and she could figure out anything. And so, you know, it's no wonder why she ended up at not NASA and doing such great things there. Right. And so I think there's a happy medium and you really have to figure out what is your calling? What are your gifts? What are you good at? at and what are the desires of your, your own heart? And you make those adjustments and you choose, you know, uh, you know, make decisions based upon where you want to be 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. I think the ultimate goal when it comes to choosing between the two is understanding what is going to ultimately fulfill you and not choosing based off of fear of what you think could happen if you don't choose this or what you think could happen if you do choose this, right? And I think that's where it really boils down to. Like for me personally, you know, I'm very entrepreneurial minded. You know, I believe in increase and in fin in financially, I, you know what I mean? Um, but one of the reasons why I'm entrepreneurial minded is because of my belief in family. And I think that one of the best ways to protect your family and to be able to make sure you're always there for your family and to be able to make sure that your family is always going to be okay is to build a business, okay, that revolves around your family. I think that's really the ultimate goal and the purpose of, of entrepreneurship besides the fact of, you know, being able to help other people and give other people opportunities and feed the poor and all those things that I believe in. But I think one of the main things that I care so much about is I want to build a life that revolves around my family where I am not tied in chains and handcuffs, you know, to, a, you know, to something, whether it's nine to five or a business. Um, but I can spend time with my family when I, when I need to, I can pour into my family when I need to. And when I say family, I'm not just talking about a husband and kids. I'm talking about even my nephews and my, and my niece, that's going to be, that's on the way, uh, come July. Right. You know, I want to create a business and a life that allows me the freedom to pour into the people that I want to pour into and to spend time with the people that I want to spend time with, right? And so ultimately, the choice is yours, right? And I think that you don't really have to choose between the two. You do just need to have discernment and understanding what season you are in and what that season calls for. And you have to think about what you want in the long run. If you know that deep inside your heart, regardless of what pain you have gone through or what fear you are feeling, but if you know in deep inside your heart that you say, I do want to eventually have a family or I do want to eventually have this, then you need to start making those adjustments. And you need to start, you know, you don't have to do it all at once, right? You don't have to do anything extreme, but 
little tiny small adjustments day by day that you know is going to lead you to that space right um and same by vice versa if you're somebody who you don't want you know a family you don't want a husband you that's not something that you care about well then you know you make your choices accordingly to align with what you want right but you know i think that susan is really on point with her with what she said most women we don't want we really like me personally though i'm in sales and i'm learning so much it's not my dream like it's not it's not my dream to be at a nine to five the rest of my life it's not my dream corporate america isn't my dream (laughs) it's just it's, it's just not and i think for most women it's not most women don't want to work 40 hours a week we just don't and that's okay it's okay to admit that you know i think that so many women are feeling guilty for admitting things that like it's your innate desire that's like God has created you that way. You shouldn't want to work 40 hours because that's not what you were built for, right? You shouldn't want to work at somebody's corporate America. And if that's what, that wasn't what you were built for, that's not where you're called to, that's not where your gifts are, like there's nothing wrong with that, right? And so I wanted to talk about that. I, I'm really interested in hearing your opinions too. So if you are subscribed to me on YouTube, on the YouTube platform, please leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts on this. And then also, you know, um, make sure you're following me on Instagram. So uh, with this new podcast in place, um, it's going to have its own separate Instagram. Um, It's tiffjourney.tv. I'm going to leave it below in the description. And when I upload this podcast, you will see it in the description notes as well, as well as all my other links. Okay. But, you know, I'm really interested in, in kind of hearing your, you guys perspective on this. And I'm, I'm very, very excited about, you know, the topics and things that we're going to be discussing um, in, in upcoming, upcoming episodes. I know there's some content I made in the past where we were talking, we were like doing a um, character breakdown of uh, the women in Waiting to Exhale. And I was like going into, you know, the mindset, the choices, how they ended up where they were, where, why, where were they operating from. And a lot of women really enjoyed that. And we're going to get back into doing those things as well. Um, I can't wait to, you know, bring stuff like that back into the platform, back on the, into a podcast form as well. And so that's all I have. I'm very excited about what's next. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and I'll see you next time.